Yeah, I would be disappointed, especially based on a certain uphill finish a few days ago. Um, uh, yeah, I would be disappointed. But I still plan on trying to win a stage. And it's not going to be the bunch sprint on the Champs-Élysées, so today is it for Lance. Otherwise, he's going to bump the membership of the Stageless Winner Society up to five. Well, let's hope he breaks his duck because he certainly is on the course now and we'll know soon how he compares. Still the best time in the house is Hamilton with that 1.08.02. But now the men who are fighting out this year's Tour de France are all on course and Armstrong is st starting three minutes behind the world champion. Well, that's a big advantage for him, Phil, because he will know exactly what times are being done out on the course by Jan Ulrich. But it's this first time check after 20 and a half kilometres which is going to be important. And there it is, 22. Two minutes and 14 seconds, five seconds ahead of Ulrich. Well, five seconds isn't a lot, but it's in the right direction, that's for sure. Ulrich going through in 22.19, Armstrong going through in 22.14. Uh, uh, Christophe Moreau has been setting the pace further up the road, and his time has been obliterated. Now we're looking at the arrival of the top white jersey, the best young rider in the, or first rider in the tour, Mansebo. He has ridden well, 12th place for him, but it doesn't approach the best time of Hamilton. Well, you know, this man is still setting the race on fire out on the course, Phil. The next intermediary time split goes again to Armstrong. We're getting very close there to the time of Ulrich. He's done it again, 48.23. This time, 25 seconds faster than the German. That was the 44-kilometre checkpoint. There's still 14.5 kilometres to race, but it's now 25 seconds up. It looks as though this is revenge for the climb of the Col de Jupin, and Lance Armstrong is getting back the time he may have lost there. Well, there's confirmation of that gap, and look at Moreau in third place, one minute and 40 seconds behind. This man, though, has done a great ride out on the course. This is Joseba Belocchi. It looked, Phil, as if he was losing his third place overall, but he's recovered over the second half of this time trial course. He did because Moreau, and look right behind him, because Ulrich has almost caught him at three minutes as they come up to the line. Belocchi may hang on to third, but now look how close has Ulrich got here. This is going to be the second fastest time trial in the history of the Tour, as Ulrich Ulrich comes in there with that brilliant time of 1.05.26 and that is the new best time. Well, the only one man who can beat him now is the man who wears number one last year's winner, Armstrong, into the final kilometre of this bike race, Phil. The time to beat is 1.05.26, and he is hammering down this course. 1.04.29 is going to be so tight on the line, Phil, but he just might do it. I think he will, and I think we're going to see one of the fastest times ever ridden in a Tour de France over this distance. It will be the fastest ever average speed. As Armstrong comes up to the line now, has he preserved all of that 25 seconds now? Ulrich is watching, but he's really going to have to be content. I think with second the clock, he's working the way of Lance Armstrong. He is going to get his first stage winner this year's Tour de France and confirm himself as the winner in Paris in two days' time. A brilliant ride, 1-5-0-1, look at the average speed, Paul, 53.986 kilometres an hour. Almost 54 kilometres an hour, if it wasn't for Greg LeMond's time trial back in 1989, this would be the fastest time trial in history, but LeMond's fill was only over 24 kilometres, this was 58 and a half. Absolutely, with his wife Kristin there, and a little peck on the lips for him, and as he now thinks of the result, Armstrong now, 25 seconds of the good in the time trial, Chris Christophe Moreau rode brilliantly to get third, Tyler Hamilton fourth, but the one man there, Yosiba Balocchi, has got fifth and I think saved his third place overall. That is a tremendous result for him. David Miller rode well today, but in the end slipped away into seventh place. There's the race leader, and you can bet your life this was an important stage win for him. I needed to win a stage, and uh, I felt good today. I mean, I, I felt good this morning going out and riding, just warming up, and so... Uh, I wanted to do a good one. I thought it was important that, uh, like last year, I thought it was important that the yellow jersey do a good ride, do a respectable ride, and and show the, um, you know, maybe show the race and show the world that he is the strongest man. But it was a big challenge with Jan Ulrich. Did you get any time checks out on the course? Um, it was it was a big challenge. I knew that uh, that we were in Jan's backyard, and uh, you could feel that. I mean, it was it was like, uh, you know, every every. Every one of his friends and family members and the whole town was out there cheering for him. Uh, but I got a lot of time checks all along the way. Johan had, uh, we've been using radios in the time trials now, so I get time checks probably every five or ten kilometers. And then there was the race time check, so I knew where I was. 
uh, and I felt good. I felt, I mean, in the end, I was dying, but I think we.